Here are 10 things I love and hate about the all new Mac Mini. So I upgraded from an older model and one of the things I first immediately noticed the compact size. As this is actually a nice refresh from Apple, well not really a refresh, a full redesigned Mac Mini than ever before because I really do appreciate the I.O. ports being in the front as well as the audio jack port in the front as well. But in the back you have three Thunderbolt 4 ports depending on the model you select obviously. The one we have here is the base model M4 which I think is more enough for the everyday user. I'll talk more about the performance numbers. But a thing that I did notice is there's no USB-A ports back here. Because if you're upgrading from a previous generation like I did my older M2 model, we still had two USB-A ports back here. So you now have to settle with some USB-C to USB-A adapters, which isn't much of a downer, but just something to definitely be recognized. But I did appreciate from the unboxing experience, not only is the packaging that it comes with super small and compact, but the power adapter that's used, the cable, it actually is braided. It's actually braided for the first time. And I think this is actually quite nice, although it's not as long and lengthy that could have been, but I think this is the optimal size length for all types of setups. But I know for a fact, if you have like a big office, you may want to swap it with another one, but it still continues using the same two prompt terminals ports right here to simply connect to the back portion of your Mac mini. Now, this next one is a bit shocking. You see, even the base version Mac mini M4, I fix it as well as other independent content creators. They did a, their own version of a teardown video and they have discovered that it does use a swappable, not hot swappable, but you can actually remove the memory card. So even if you get the base storage option like I did, there's a high chance you will be able to swap this with a third party or first party to expand your memory storage if you need it. So I'm happy that Apple decided not to make it all soldered together like the previous generations. So it's pretty cool that this is swappable. However, there is a catch. You see, according to iFixit, the Mac Studio also has a similarity as well, where they have tested by swapping it with another memory card. The Mac itself was not able to detect it, and it's likely that the Mac Mini is the exact same way. So what they're suggesting or assuming is in the near future, Apple could authorize like a third party to produce memory cards for the Mac Mini if users need to upgrade them or increase performance so long as the technology is, it continues to evolve. In other words, this Mac Mini does seem like it will be future proof, but knowing the community, in which the community is very strong after seeing what they did with the Spotify thing, I'm pretty sure we should be able to modify it or hack it so we could actually use our memory cards of choice with this ME memory slot right here. Nonetheless, this is fantastic news, but still not 100% certain what we could do with it. So I'll think of this more like what happened earlier with the launch of the PlayStation 5. There was a memory card slot, but we didn't have access to it until like years later when Sony made it accessible for consumers to upgrade in their internal storage. Now, real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, make sure to leave this video a like because that not only helps support the channel, but also allows me to continue making my videos powered by you guys. Because I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick and tired of watching my YouTube videos and they have integrated ad segments from brands like a VPN or something like that. So by hitting that like button, that lets me know that you also appreciate these no sponsor integrated ad videos. But now let's carry on. So aside from the 4K monitor support now, Thunderbolt 4, as well as Thunderbolt 5 access, if you upgrade to the M4 Max, which is not really necessary, you'll find out more on what I mean in a little bit. This thing runs in pretty low temperature. I've already exported and edited a couple photos, exported some 4K videos. Fans themselves are fairly quiet. It's definitely built for travel or can easily be used in a household, ideal for like a home theater setup if you absolutely need to. And if you don't have audio, don't worry. They're just like the previous generation Mac Mini. It does have a built-in speaker. Not the best quality speaker, but nonetheless, a speaker that'll easily get the job done. But I have to address the elephant in the room, and that is the power button. It's actually located in the back. Now, personally, to me, I really don't care. I don't really recall myself ever having to use the power button that often on my Mac Mini, even though it was recently placed in the back. Being on the bottom, I'm fairly confident I'll continue having the same power off experience where I just go into the system settings and turn it off this way. And then since it's so tiny and lightweight, it's no problem with me just having to lift it up slightly and just power it on. In fact, I kind of like this because unless you already own one or you already are informed, 
to the average person, they may just look at it and like, how do I turn on your computer? So this could be a security feature as well. So inconvenience to some, but most people I'm sure I don't care. But the thing that does always bug me the most is the fact there's no peripheral options. Pros and cons to this. You see, when you unbox it, that's all you get. Just a Mac mini and a power cable. No stickers, just a small manual guide. As soon as it powers on, it walks you through everything else you need to know. So that means you gotta provide your own wireless mouse or keyboard. And so long as it's a modern keyboard, doesn't matter if it's wireless or wired, you could pick one up for like $5 at the, the dollar store, which kind of defeats the purpose of the brand, but inflation, you know, it's compatible with every modern day mouse and keyboard, but if you'd like to know what peripherals I'm using, well, I got the lightning cable version of the full row keyboard from Apple, which doesn't have a backlight, unfortunately. And I picked up the trackpad because I'm really happy with my MacBook trackpad and I like not having to move a lot just to navigate my screen. And the reason why I went with the lightning port version is due to the fact they're discounted and usually around $20 or more off. And usually when I'm working on my Mac mini, I don't move my cables around. So I always have a lightning cable right then and available. Although everything else is switching USB-C, this is dedicated for the keyboard and mouse. And the battery life with my peripherals last me quite a while. So that's my setup, but also supports Logitech or other third party, even mechanical keyboards as well. So I do like the freedom to select whatever wireless mouse and keyboard I like to use or wired. But a disappointing factor about the Mac mini is that it does not have Wi-Fi 7. You see, unlike the iPhone 16, this one does not have Wi-Fi 7, still using the previous generation Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6 e I'll have the correct text right there. Nonetheless, not a big deal. Just something worth highlighting. But when it comes to performance speed, the Mac mini, as you already know, is equipped with the latest M4 processor for just the base model. And comparing the performance from my fully loaded at that time, which almost cost me four grand, MacBook Pro with the M1 Max ship, there's always a noticeable minute or more difference when it comes to exporting videos. So my M1 Max is getting beat by a quarter of the price Mac mini at the time. So the savings and performance, it's super impressive between these two different products. So if you're planning on picking up a Mac mini for all purposes, graphic designing or daily use, the Mac mini, even the base model, in my opinion, is a very well value power machine. For just under $600, this thing outperforms almost everything for its value. And if you act fast, it's already on sale too. On Amazon, you could apply a $30 discount, which, which for its checkout price would just be $550. And then also if you're a Best Buy tech member or whatever your plan is called, it's also being discounted as well for just $50 off for $550. So a better deal on retail stores than picking it up directly through Apple. However, if you find the student link, which you could just do a simple Google search, and Apple doesn't request for a verification if you are a student or not, you could get this for just $100 off, so saving you more money. But if you did the method I did, I'm just gonna go ahead and trade in my previous Mac Mini because Apple is actually valuing this for $250, and I think it's a fair upgrade, which is why I upgraded to the latest generation Mac Mini. But I found a lot of interesting things I had to share with you guys in case you also are in the market for one of these. So there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, if you can leave this video a like, Truly appreciate those. But I'm curious to know what's your thoughts about the latest generation Mac Mini. Are you going to get the M4 version or are you going to go all out to get the M4 Pro and utilize Thunderbolt 5? So feel free to let us know in the comments what's your thoughts about it for everybody else. Thank you so much for watching.